This is M eight D one five four four, and we with eight point one in our books about the product rule and the quotient rule. That's what we're going to look at this morning. Now, the first thing that we must tell each other is that when you multiply two functions, remember it's now about a product of two functions. As you can see here, it's the function f times the function g. So we have a function f. And then we have another function g. Okay, and we are going to multiply those two functions. Uh, say now uh, 2x minus 1 is the f. And say now um, x squared plus 3, say now is g. So we're multiplying these two functions now. This is function f, this is function g. Right, and we want to find the derivative the first derivative of those functions. Then, in other words, we, we want now to have the derivative there. So then it's not equal to the derivative times the derivative. That's the problem. That's what's catching out everybody. Okay, so that's not true. So the rule is then that we find the derivative of the first function times it by the second function as it is. We must have a plus here, and then we swap it around. Okay, so just, be, just repeat that again. So if we want the derivative of the product of two functions, we take the derivative of the first function, multiply it with the second just as it is, plus take the first function just as it is, multiply it with the derivative of the second function. So if we can do this example we have here. So if we now want f g prime, then we're going to take the derivative of the first function, which will just be 2, multiply that by the second function just as it is. Then we will have a plus we will take the second function, uh, the, f uh, the first function just as it is, I'm sorry. Well, that doesn't matter actually the, uh, the order. And then times it by the, the derivative of the second function. We could have had uh, the 2x uh, in front. Remember the derivative of x squared plus 3 is just 2x. The derivative of 2x minus 1 is just 2. Okay, now we can just simplify that. Uh, 2x squared, but that is now like grade 10 work, 2x squared plus 6, and then plus 4x squared, I think, just double check on me please, minus 2x, and that is 6x squared, uh, 6x squared minus 2x plus 6. Okay, so that's how we do the product rule. It's really, really not difficult. Um, if we look at the quotient rule, then we can just exercise a couple of uh, a couple of them for this morning. Okay, so the quotient rule again the same. We can use those two. Uh, let me just copy the the two examples there. We had two x uh, minus one for f. And we had x squared plus 3 for g. Okay, so let us just move up that we just have space for the quotient rule. So, okay, once again, if we ha have a quotient, meaning we're dividing two functions, okay, f over g, and we want to get the derivative of that, it will not be equal to the derivative over the derivative. That is not true. It's not, it's not correct. So here we have the quotient rule. Now let us just quickly just discuss the quotient rule and then do the example. So be very, very, very careful. If you look at the top there, the numerator, you will almost see the product rule. The derivative of f times g and then the other way around. But the power rule, if I can just go down like that, the power rule had a plus here. 
sorry, I just want to get that. The power rule had a plus there. All right. There we have a plus, and the quotient ruler have the minus here. Oh, please, please, please don't confuse the two. So it is like the product rule at the top, but here you must have a minus. So remember now, the quotient, let's say that division is going to give us a minus there to remember it. Okay, so it's like the product rule at the top. So you take the first function's derivative, the top one, please, times the bottom as it is. Then minus, not plus, like in the product rule, the other way around, and then just over g squared. So the bottom one squared. Okay, so let us try that now in the, two, the, the example. So basically, um, we have the function then 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 3. Okay, and we want the derivative of this now. This is now our f over g. Okay, and now we want f over g, the derivative there. <clears throat> so then what we do is, the top function's derivative times the bottom as it is, minus the other way around so we can say it's the 2x the derivative of this one of the bottom times the top as it is the top just as it is over and then we can just square the bottom one the bottom one squared the bottom one squared now it's just a matter of simplification so this is basically already the rule now and simplification really f falls on the previous parts but just be careful that you don't be your yeah, be focused please that you just make 100 percent sure um, you will multiply everything out correctly you must also check me now because if I speak and do, I sometimes think I want to say this and this and that and then I don't focus. So minus 4x squared plus 2x. The bottom you can just leave like that. I don't think you, have, you don't have to multiply it out. Just leave it like that. If you need to multiply it, you can do it later. But that's just uh, uh, at least simplify the top so this gives 2x squared and minus 4x squared it looks like minus 2x squared and then we have a plus 2x and then we have the plus 6 and then we have over x squared plus 3 so you can imagine if you need to do this now by first principles how hectic that is going to be so that so we we're so thankful for these rules so that we can 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 find the derivative of, of a quotient because it's because if you have to this already look at it looks a little bit uh, complicated so you can think i mean it's not difficult but i mean there's a lot of a lot that you must do here so you can imagine if you had to do this by first principle so all all these derivatives the products the quotients and uh, next time we're going to do the chain rule, which is a very, very, I think the most important rule. Although we cannot maybe judge, judge in mass like that. But I honestly think that the quotient rule in calculus is such a powerful and important rule. Um, but for, for this morning, we just talk about the product and the quotient. And that is how you will find the product and the quotient rule. Let's just scroll down a little bit and just look. At an example there so here we have a definitely a product there is a multiply there so how, how, how do, we, do we find the derivative of this product so remember now I just want to try and fit everything in here so we said that you're gonna rewrite so here we're just rewriting okay and we must 
recognize ourselves that this is a product, a product of two functions. Né? So now we're going to apply the power, uh, the product rule, sorry. So we take the derivative of the first, which is two thirds x and one power less, times the second one just as it is, then plus for the product rule, keep the first function as it is. Now in this, if you if you're here, you can write that part there, or you can write the rewritten part there. That doesn't matter, because that is the first function, just written in another way. That's a rewrite, as we said before. So you can just keep it like that. And then, of course, times the derivative of the second function, which will be 2 minus 2x. That is the product rule. Okay, and then the next part of it is just to remove all the brackets and simplify a little bit. Okay, so I'm not so worried about that for this morning. Alright, it's more about the rule itself. So let's look at, we've got those two functions. So let's say that is f, and let's say that is g, and we want now the derivative of the product, fg prime. So find the derivative of the first, multiply it by the second as it is, the derivative of the first will be 18x squared minus 1. We use the power rule. That's why we did the power rule first. Times the second as it is. Plus, keep the first as it is. And multiply with the derivative of the second, which is minus 20. And now it's just simplification. So that will be the derivative of that, the product of those two functions. Okay, if we can just do an example of um, a quotient. So here we have like f over g. Okay, so the quotient rule says find the derivative of the top. So that will be 3. That's the top. Numerator. The derivative will only be 3. There's the 3. Right. Multiply it by the bottom as it is. There's the bottom. Now minus. Remember minus. The top as it is. Times the derivative of the bottom. The denominator. Minus 1. There's the minus 1. Over the bottom squared. There's the bottom squared. And now, again, it's just simplification for the final step. Okay, let's look at H also. All right. So, this is clearly a quotient. It is F over G. Two functions that are divided by each other. So, I can rewrite that first and make it 4x to the half. 4x to the half, 4x to the half, over x squared minus 2. And now, it's a quotient, so the derivative of the top, it will be a half times 4, half times 4, x, 1 power less, so a half minus 1, it will be minus a half. Multiply that now by the bottom as it is. There's the bottom. So x squared minus 2. Now minus. Keep the, the top as it is. So we can use 4x to the half or 4 squared root x. But remember you want to simplify afterwards. So maybe it's just better to keep it now in exponential form. So minus 4x to the half times the derivative of the bottom which will be 2x over the bottom squared. Now just multiply now in. This gives 2x to the, remember there's another x squared, and there's an x to the negative a half. So 2 minus a half will be 1 and a half, and the 2 and, and the 1 there will give 2. So this is just simplification. So this gives that, and then I must also multiply it, of course, with a minus 2. So the 2, 4 times a half is 2, times the minus 2 will be minus 4, x to the negative half, multiply these 2's, negative 8x, add your exponents, 1.5, and, and just see 
but you can simplify more and leave the bottom as a square don't don't mess there i think we will for for our course that will be a hundred percent okay so this is how we do the product rule for differentiation and the quotient rule for differentiation to find the derivatives using the product rule and the quotient rule and uh, please go look at um, the sheets I'm going to put for you in classroom for exercising the answers will be at the bottom so you can then use them to exercise and check yourselves